The four fundamental forces of nature, gravity, electromagnetism, and the strong and weak nuclear forces. Now, scientists have blasted neutrons through a crystal of silicon to create waves, like waves crashing on a beach, helping physicists hunt for a new fundamental force of nature, a so-called fifth force. binds the galaxy together. Now physicists know that there may be other forces in addition to gravity, electromagnetism, and the nuclear forces. Now if we were to observe a new force, it could answer the most fundamental questions, ranging from the nature of dark matter to the nature of dark energy. In 2021, an experiment carried out at NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, gave some tantalizing hints about a so-called fifth force. These researchers, unlike the Los Alamos lifetime measurements, use neutrons to bombard silicon crystals in order to set a new constraint on any potential fifth fundamental force of nature that operates only at atomic scales. The study also included measurements that are precisely constraining about the structure of silicon and how neutrons interact with these crystals and how they behave on their own. The study's lead author NIST physicist Benjamin Heacock said, the work of this fifth force search is actually going on over an entire length scale of human observation, ranging from the ultra small to large, even superhuman or super earth size. He says that physicists look for subtle effects in everything from astronomical surveys like galaxies to the minuscule motions of custom built microscopic apparatus. So far, all of these searches for fifth fundamental forces have come up empty. Renowned physicist Eric Adelberger of the University of Washington in Seattle, who's not involved with the NIST study, says that there's a reason to think we're missing something. Measuring the absolute value of something is tricky always. Adelberger and his own team are also looking for the impact of fundamental new forces, concluded that the fifth force must be so much weaker than some of the other theories have predicted, or it may not even exist. The NIST experiment follows a similar trajectory, but it uses a different experimental technique. As the leader Benjamin Heacock says, the goal of the experimentalist is to make strides in limiting the strength of new forces, whatever the experiment can do. For us, it happens to be on the atomic scale. But how do you measure the effects of unknown interactions at microscopic and submicroscopic scales. It's extremely challenging. At the atomic realm, you have quantum effects that take over. These scales that they're probing are a million times smaller than the dot on the end of a sentence. How much matter can you get that still behaves according to a fifth force, but doesn't destroy the tenuous correlations between these particles of silicon as they interact with neutrons. Neutrons are neutral, so they can penetrate into these crystals, unlike, say, protons or electrons. The magnetic forces and fields of the atomic nuclei of the silicon barely perturb the neutrons as they penetrate into these crystal lattices. Now, neutrons, as we've discussed, are not elementary particles. They're made up of Clarks held together glued together, if you will, by gluons. These gluons obey the strong nuclear force. Strong interaction is really a misnomer. It should be called the insanely strong reaction because it's incredibly powerful. And the quarks that make up the neutron are almost completely unmolested as they make their way into these crystals. Because the neutrons are uncharged electromagnetically, they don't participate in the electromagnetic reaction to a very strong degree. That makes them ideal probes to shoot into these crystals. A co-author in the NIST-led study by the name of Albert Young, a physicist at North Carolina State University, he said, at present, at the atomic length scales, neutrons kind of rule. In their experiment, their collaborators at the Riken Center for Advanced Photonics in Japan made this very, very common material, silicon. It's one of the most abundant elements in the entire Earth's crust. But getting precision machine silicon is very difficult to do. Silicon is extremely hard and brittle and it cracks. Mm, wow, it's heavy. Oh. And to make it into a purified crystal takes very advanced technology. Inside this perfect crystal, wherein the atoms of silicon are perfectly isolated from sources of light, from heat, from vibration, external noise, the silicon atoms become arranged in a perfect cityscape grid-like pattern as these Switzerland-like neutrons travel through, unperturbed, 
undisturbed and not interacting through the grid, they collide every so often with one of the silicon atoms and they can evade others. But at the atomic scale, the neutrons are obeying the laws of quantum mechanics and all these particles now exhibit wave-like phenomena. The silicon collisions with the neutrons are similar to waves crashing on a shore. When a neutron bumps into a silicon atom, this interaction creates a ripple. The ripples interact and they overlap constructively here, destructively there, and it makes a type of pattern called a diffraction pattern. These brilliant researchers then ensured that some of these crashing neutron waves that lapped on the silicon shores of atoms, that they overlapped in a very specific way, so-called Pendolosung oscillations. I should get Sabina Hassenfelder to pronounce this German word. These interference patterns are kind of like the beats that you hear, not from Beats headphones by Dr. Dre, but actually interference patterns that you hear from closely spaced speakers. These Pendolosung interference patterns have been known about for a very long time, but they haven't really been used since their discovery in the 1960s at MIT. Most experiments aren't sensitive to these oscillations, but the NIST team was. They carefully analyzed the resulting pattern of interference, looking for minuscule details about the scattering silicon atoms that play the role in this analogy of little tiny rocks, and the waves, like the ocean waves in this analogy, are neutron quantum wave function waves as they crash into them. They can tell how much energy, the amplitude of the wave that was carried by each of these neutron incoming crashing waves. They could also track, do the rocks themselves move in counter reaction to the collision with these neutrons? How does this have anything to do with a fifth force? Well, if there were a fifth force interaction at play, the neutron wave interference pattern would have manifested itself, much the same way that oceanographers here at San Diego's Scripps Institution of Oceanography use the pattern of waves on the ocean surface to reveal properties deep, deep below the surface on the ocean floor. So they would have seen the manifestation of a fifth force, but they didn't. And actually, they were able to set a new constraint that's over an order of magnitude better than previous constraints on how massive a fifth force of nature could be. The NIST team also declares that a new improvement on their innovative setup will allow them to make even more strides in the precise measurement of constraining or ruling out fifth forces. This is another example of something you hear about all the time on this channel. Unlike searches for wormholes and multiverses, and maybe even string theory itself, we can learn as much by ruling out theories as we can by conjecturing new theories that can't be tested. So we learn a lot about the properties of crystals, about neutrons, and we actually rule out the behavior of these fascinating fifth forces of nature. When researchers combine the neutron lifetime measurements and other properties, such as the magnetic properties of neutrons, they'll learn more about neutrons and they'll be able to make more and more precise constraints on so-called fifth forces. This is just one step, as the researchers admit, along a journey that will hopefully illuminate some of the most mysterious aspects of nature. Is nature bountiful and plentiful, exhibiting more than just the four familiar forces of nature? We have yet to see. We know it's a tiny effect, if it's there at all. The key is to not give up and keep searching. And who knows, maybe someone out there will play a role in a novel new test of fundamental forces, fields, and energy scales with unbelievable cosmic implications. What do you think? Leave a comment below. Are there more than four forces of nature? And if so, what's the best way to look for them? Don't forget to subscribe and enjoy my mailing list at briankating.com for bi-monthly updates on cool things going on in the heavens and down here on Earth.